In this video, we're going to go over explicit and implicit memory. Explicit memory is also called declarative memory. This is the long-term storage and conscious recall of facts, experiences, and concepts. This includes both semantic memory and episodic memory. Semantic memory is referring to the memory of facts and concepts, so your ability to recall mathematical equations, the names of fruits, and the definitions of words. In this case, you can see how it's conscious because someone can ask you, what is the name of this fruit? And you can consciously recall that fact. Episodic memory is the long-term storage of personal experiences. So as an example, you might recall the first time you went on a plane flight. One thing to know for the exam that is important is that the hippocampus is required for explicit memory. And this is well known from a famous patient named Henry Meliasson, who suffered epilepsy as a child and underwent medial temporal lobectomy in order to treat the epilepsy. In this case, the medial temporal lobes were removed from both sides of the brain. And this included the hippocampus. And after the operation, Henry Meliasson was no longer able to form explicit memory. Next, we have implicit memory, which is also called non-declarative memory. This is the long-term storage and unconscious influence of experience on behavior. You'll notice that this is unconscious. So this is something that you do unconsciously. So as an example, we can consider procedural memory, which is one type of implicit memory. This is the long-term storage that aids in the performance of particular types of tasks without conscious awareness of previous experiences. So examples include riding a bike or tying your shoes, right? So when you're tying your shoes, you don't have to consciously think about it. It just happens automatically. But if you hadn't learned to tie your shoes before, then you wouldn't be able to do it unconsciously. It's also important to note that the hippocampus is not required for implicit memory. Again, after Henry Meliasson underwent the operation to remove his medial temporal lobes, while he was not able to form new explicit memories, he was still able to form implicit memories. So that means that they were able to have Henry Meliasson partake in complicated tasks, and after multiple trials, he became better and better at performing them, even though he was not consciously aware that he was performing them in the first place. Okay, so that is explicit and implicit memory.